we call the dressing of the night. We have our Lord Constable as well over here as well. Uh, Sir Joseph has very kindly agreed to... Uh, That's me. To, uh, this, is, this, this is you, indeed. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> has agreed to, to get his harness on slightly early in order to, to prepare us. So, so a round of, round of applause here for, for Sir Joseph. Uh, Helping us out here in this fabulous blue harness as well. So, uh, before we begin, I, I believe we're going to discuss what is a knight. Yeah, so um, it, it's, it's worth just sort of introducing the concept of a knight because you'll hear a lot today about knights, you'll see knights fighting, and I can see by the look on your face, you're all there going, Well, what actually is a knight? Um, especially as you're never going to become one. Um, so, knights, uh, yeah, I do. So, <laughs> So knights is not a rank, okay? Knight is a, it's an honorific, it's a title awarded predominantly, certainly up to this period, 15th century, for prowess in battle. So whilst it tends to be the nobility that are knighted, it doesn't have to be. Anybody can be knighted, but it's a very select clique of people. It's a shared uh, a prowess, it's shared military background, but also that code and honour of chivalry. We think that knights date back to the Roman times, uh, and there were a, 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 a group of people in Roman uh, in Roman society called patricians, and they had an obligation to fight for Rome, to fight for the Republic, and they were people who arrived on horseback in armour, and they were very, very skilled at what they did. They had a, a, a tag equites, which again is about being on horses. The real flowering of knighthood, as we talk about it, and chivalry, comes really from the period of Charlemagne, where uh, he had armoured men on horseback called chevaliers. Now, one of the things you'll notice as we talk around the armour and everything else, a lot of these terms are French, and it is a French, Norman French kind of uh, concept. So this code of honour that knights had to uh, behave correctly to one another, to honour one another, to respect those worse off than themselves, uh, and to fight always for, for good um, is, is really what knighthood is all about. So you can earn your spurs by showing not just your prowess on the field of battle, that's number one, but also the way in which you behave to your fellow man and the way that you behave at court. Very good. So uh, as the constable obviously explaining a little bit about uh, becoming a knight and being a knight, as uh, Joseph over here has placed on his leg harness, so harness rather than suit, we don't call it a suit of armour, that's the type of thing you might find in Scooby-Doo, <laughs> stood in, in the corner of your, uh, of your corridor, however this is, uh, this is Sir Joseph's leg harness, so made up of, of various different parts, we have, you, you, you could choose to wear the boots, sabatons they're called, and they would obviously make it slightly difficult when running, in, running through a field of battle, the possibility of getting them caught in the ground and you end up basically end up facing the dirt is, is quite quite an, <laughs> ob an obvious thing to, that would be a problem for you. So obviously you're not wearing those today, Sir Joseph, which Absolutely probably not. is a sensible decision. Uh, we then have Greaves here, which is, if any of you have ever played football, anybody played football? We obviously wear shin pads, shin pads to protect, protecting your shin, stop you from splintering your shin, which is quite a, quite a common injury for things like football and hockey and also would be a similar injury that you might occur on the battlefield as well and even in tournament grounds as well. Now this is joined to this part here, the polyne which is the knee and then you have the cuisse which protects the thigh. Now it only goes up to about here and then you will, as we'll see later on, you'll protect the area around the hips downwards with a skirt. You wear a skirt of, of mail which protects this area just here. There are certain places that you don't want to have pieces of sheet steel and the dangly areas are not places where you want to trap between two pieces of sheet steel, <laughs> which is not ideal for obvious Daddy. reasons. So this this obviously is joined here. You can see the pin that sticks out just over. Oh, sorry. Just here. sorry there. Thank you very much, Joseph. So this pin is quite important. This connects the the, the poly and the quiz to the the group with here, separate part. This comes in two separate pieces. So that connecting it, making it easier for him to move the leg, is very important as well. So, so um, what, uh, as has been described here, and I talked about uh, fighting on horseback, now increasingly in the period of the 15th century, knights are not fighting on horseback, particularly in this country. If you want to know why that is, when there's a lull in the fighting today, please go over to the archer's tent and have a look at some of the arrows that archers would use to shoot horses. Right? Horses are becoming less effective on the field of battle, and therefore knights are increasingly fighting on foot. 
Now, still fight on, on horseback and, and at the tilt as well. At the list, they will fight. If you've been here recently, you may have seen a joust. And everybody sees this concept of a knight thundering down on horseback and charging into one another with exploding lances and everything else. And it's all great, isn't it? However, the best prowess for any knight is fighting on foot. Now, to fight on foot, you need to be fast, agile, and mobile. So what happens is the armor you wear is a compromise. Ideally, you want to be fully encased. A lot of the back appears to be unprotected. But again, remember, the origins of the armor is sat on a horse. So you've got one ton of very large animal protecting your rear. So you protect these bits. You need to be able to get on a horse, get off a horse, and out here, if you get knocked down, you need to be able to get back to your feet, and you need to be able to fight your way back to your feet. So all of the armor is flexible. And as I say, it layers up, it's a compromise. So do I fully enclose myself? I'm well protected, but not as mobile. Or do I forgo some of the plates that I can have and actually make myself more mobile and the fighters the sort of weapon that I want to fight with? Now this is this is a bit where it's really good for us to shut up and just watch because it's quite entertaining. <laughs> now, seen a man put on a skirt before. So Sir Joseph is going to put on his male mini skirt. <laughs> It's not chain mail, it's mail. Mail simply because it's the French word for net. And it is literally a net of mail and it's really flexible. And it needs to be flexible here. Uh, he wears it to protect his inheritance. It also gives him a lot of flexibility when he gets onto his horse. But also when he's fighting, it means he can kneel down, he can get up, he can do forward rolls. <laughs> Which he will now demonstrate. <laughs> Save that maybe for tomorrow, not. maybe. Yeah. You'll have to come back tomorrow to yeah. see that one. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll see what, what happens today. That's it. I might do it involuntary. Or involuntary, should I say. Now, as you can see, uh, Sir Joseph is, is tying this on. Sometimes you could attach th this as well as your, your leg harness to your arming jack. Uh, Sir Joseph has attached this to a belt, which you could also do as well. There's no kind of rhyme and reason to how you attach it. You can attach your male skirt with a belt as well. Most m most people of this period tended to wear belts for everything. You can wear belts for your underwear, belts for your armour. There's a lot of belts involved. And this, obviously, is covering the tabard here, which is the colours. Obviously, on a field of battle, you've got a lot of people running around dressed like tin cans. It's difficult to know which tin can is the tin can you should be attacking. So it makes it a lot easier if you have the colours here. Now, this obviously will be on show because Sir Joseph will not be wearing a, a plate for the back. So what will be going on in a moment is the cuirass, which will, which is the whole breastplate that can be the front and back as well. You can combine the two. But for the purposes of today, again, we won't be wearing the, the back plate, I believe, Sir Joseph. So you'll be able to see that. Now going on now, we have the standard, so this protecting protecting the neck here, again made from mail. Not, not, necess not obviously a necessary thing, you, you can just wear the bever, which will go on in just a moment as well, which protects the, the chin here. But this part here, just adding a little bit of extra protection to the neck there. And also the gaps just here, which we call the voiders. So where do you want to go next? Before we um, before we cover this on the cuirass, should talk about this. Refer to as a, a, a it's an arming doublet, and we talk about armour as being a harness. It's not a it's not a suit of armour. Uh, as I say that's a Victorian term. It's a harness. And the reason being, it's a series of holes and straps to which all your armour can be attached. Now, as you run around, as you move, step back a bit. It's easy, and you might see this with the gold knight, who's a new knight. In fact, he's still yellow. He's not gold yet. Um, but it's easy for uh, new knights to get into their armour uh, and they'll be strapped in like a fighter pilot or a Formula One driver. You know, get a knee on the chest, get his straps and his points done up nice and tight and that's brilliant. He feels really secure in it. He runs around, 15 minutes later, he's wondering why he has to walk like this. Because his body's expanded and all those laces and points are now so much tighter. So this has to be almost infinitely adjustable. And that is one of the critical roles of a squire. Uh, and, and a good, you know, senior uh, knight will probably have at least two squires with him, and their job is to constantly adjust this as he fights, as he takes dents. You don't take very many dents, do you, Sir Joseph? Because no, he no, often no. wins. All right. Um, but that ability to adjust the armour as you go, and you can then fight in it. 
Okay, so as we can see, the bever has gone on now. So this, again, adding a bit of extra protection here to the neck. Also protecting the chin, that fabulous beard. And uh, <laughs> up, up into the mouth and the bottom of the nose as well. This also stops him from biting people, which I believe is something that you're, uh, you need to stop doing. So we've, we've added that so that he doesn't bite people. Uh, as you can see, we also have, have the, the arm harness here as well. So this is made up of, of several different parts. We have here, you have the van brace. You then have the cooter, which is the elbow just here. Above that, you have the rear brace, which goes there, and then above that, you have spolders. Now, there are two types of things you wear here, spolders or pauldrons or pauldrons, and they will be slightly different sizes. So these spolders here make it easier for a swordsman. Pauldrons make it difficult for you to lift your, your arms pretty much above shoulder height, which can prove to be a problem, especially when taking a high guard with the sword. So as, as a swordsman, no idea. Uh, so Joseph will be wearing spolders here. And we're going to add this part here. Now this is the cuirass here, made up of various different parts. You have tassets here, which just add a bit of extra protection to the important areas. We then have folds here, these folds or lames, they're made up of several different parts, make it liftable, easier to adjust and move upwards and downwards. And then you have the placard and the breastplate here as well. This is obviously covered, covered in suede and can be the color, pretty much any color of your choosing, in fact. Mm. The, um, it's worth saying at this, um, uh, and it may be, we're, uh, we're happy with, if we've got time, we'll take some questions. Well, we'll Absolutely, try and get yeah. some in. Um, so so I, I know the one question you're going to ask, just hold it for now, um, okay, as he is. Um, so the, the covering on the breastplate is, is um, decoration, but functional as well. I talked about archers earlier. So uh, we know that if you use a bodkin head arrow, and again, please go and have a look on the camp. Um, with some armour, not quite so good quality as this, you can actually punch through with an arrow. Remember, the arrow is doing about 130 miles an hour when it leaves the bow. When it arrives over about 100 yards, it will punch through because it whips and you get a shockwave that flows backwards and forwards. We don't know that in the 15th century because we don't have medieval YouTube, all right? But you can go and look at it and see that arrow in flight. It's quite uh, amazing. What we discovered, almost by accident, is if you wear a surcoat or something like this, it dispels that first shockwave of the arrow. So the arrow no longer punches through, it bounces off. So a lot of this, as I say, it, you know, armour and weaponry is evolving all the time, and you're probably at this period, late 15th century, at the absolute pinnacle of the armourer's art. So going on now, we have the, the gauntlets. This means that all of a sudden, Sir Joseph is now really good at boxing. <laughs> uh, you, you can use it to punch people. In fact, there are this various... Um, <laughs> various Italian manuscripts in fact that, that show us that knights learnt to wrestle in full harnesses of armour which is obviously something itself, that's, which is a bit of a feat in itself as you say. So these, these go on here and then once you have these we have the last, the last thing of course as well which is going on in a second and that's the helmet. This particular helmet is the Sale, various types of helmet you could wear. This one here is the, the Sale with a visor, this one, so you can bring the visor down and jaw cover well, the whole of your face. So jawbone sale here. So dropping the visor would make him look even more intimidating than he already does. No offense. None taken. There we go. And there we have it. Now you're appears to be relatively properly dressed. Yes. There we go. So do you want to take some questions? Yes, yeah, so if, you, if anybody has any, any questions that you would like to like to ask, any burning questions, put your, put your raise your hand, hand in the air and then we shall uh, any answer questions? any questions that you might have. Yes. So how heavy is this? Okay. How many kilograms are? I need I, I need to do old money. Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. They say it's like um, between um, four and five stone. So we're looking about half your body weight. So I think I'm around 80 odd kilos. So this should be about 40. Five and stone this is half of your body weight, speak for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's meant to be like, um, this is only front facing harness as well. I haven't got my back plate on. Um, I haven't got the, the full lower cannons, which are your van braces when they're full over, or rear braces. So it can range from about 40 to 50 kilos, I'd say. And how long are you able to carry it around? Um, um, you'll see, time. I don't know if you've seen any fighting so far. Uh, okay, you'll see, when we'll, we'll fight in a minute, you will see it's surprisingly agile and mobile. When you wear this, you do get used to it, and the weight is distributed because of the way the arming doublet works, where the belts and the straps work, the weight is distributed. 
So the, the length of time you can fight for is governed, there's two factors. One is your, your stamina. Remember, knights train all the time. This is, you know, it's kind of, a, especially tournament knights, it's kind of nature. You know, they are sportsmen, peak physical fitness. Now the problem is, when you fight, whether you're on the field of battle, or whether you're in the tournament arena, when you've got your bever up and your visor down, remember you're at kind of peak heart rate at that point, so you're 160, 170 beats per minute, you're breathing very fast, the adrenaline starts to just wear away a bit, particularly on the field of battle. And what happens is you're breathing out carbon dioxide into this area. And when you take that breath back in, what's happening over time, of course, is the level of carbon dioxide is increasing. You're not getting that fresh charge of oxygen. So what tends to happen is it's less about your tiring, but you start to notice your vision closes in, you start to get a little bit, you know, distant, you can yeah. feel it, like any athlete who's going through that kind of burn, that wall. And that's the time as a knight, and this is why your squires and your entourage are so important, is you've got to take a step out of the fighting and you've got to lift your visor and drop your feather. Now, it might be a sip of wine, it might just be a few glasses, a few breaths of air, to try and refresh that, recharge that, get more oxygen back into your blood so you can step into the fight. So a fight might go on for an hour or two hours of battle. These fights are much quicker because of the skill of the knights, but you can probably only fight for about 15 minutes as a any other questions at all, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> we knew it was there. Did you not see, madam? Sorry? Did you not spot it? No. It's been a couple did. of times. Yeah. <laughs> the um, couple of things you learn about putting armour on is go beforehand. <laughs> right. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, but, but at that stage, it's not the thing you're worrying about the most. Right. Now, you can, if you've got a very good squire, you know, you can lift your folds, lift your tassets, lift your skirts up, undo your codpiece and help you. Um, it would need to be a very... And that's why the relationship between a squire and his knights it is so important. Or alternatively, <laughs> given that Sir Joseph will not worry about cleaning his armour, or his hose, or anything else, he may actually just... Yeah. Somebody else will sort that out. <laughs> You'll be developing slightly rusty mail down the front of us. <laughs> Any more questions? Or are you completely stunned by oh, the side down yes. here? Oh. Yes. Why don't you paint the armour? Why don't you paint the armour? Why don't you paint it? So it's not a different colour. Because it's a silly foreign thing to do. Mm. <laughs> Foreigners paint their armour. Right. So we don't need to, because we wear. Uh, the colouring of the armour is important as well because there's being a knight and the armour you wear is all about status and presence. This is not a stealth activity. You don't creep up on people as a knight. You step in and let them know who you are. Good English knight, occasionally a good Welsh knight, but not a good English knight, taking to the field. You wear your colours so your men know who you are. So, based on your colours and the fact that Sir Joseph will be recognised on the field, he doesn't gain anything by doing that. You'll find some, especially mercenary knights from nasty foreign places like France and Ireland and Scotland, will paint their armour. Some Scottish people paint their faces as well, they look really silly. But you can colour it, yep. it's, it's as simple. So you can use paint, or like mine, it's been heat treated. That means uh, it's been put to a very, 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 very hot temperature and then washed in a blue oil. So it has that kind of, that bluey kind of tint to it. But it's still, as you can see here, I still have a, a white, parts of white harness under there as well. So that's, that's what it was called, the white harness. There are certain colours that you, that you can still do nowadays and there are certain colours that ye olde medieval health and safety means that we can no longer do, unfortunately. But, uh, but there are still like some green. Can, like green, you can... Kill Medieval you. health and safety will not allow us to do green because of my, my archer has a bottle of green, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which he has to keep very carefully. Yes, it's good for dipping your arrows in it before you shoot people. Biological warfare. Mm. <laughs> any more for any more? Anything else? Mm. Oh, amazing. If you're, yeah, sorry, I've <laughs> stepped in a bit. But I, we need to let uh, uh, Sir Joseph go and, and take on some water before the next uh, combat display. Happy to hang around for a couple of minutes. If somebody's got, you know, the question they're too embarrassed to ask.
on behalf of everybody else, please feel free to come up and, uh, and ask. Um, there are no such things as dark questions when it comes to armour and everything else. Uh, if not, can I have a round of applause, please, for... Round of applause, for obviously, for our, uh, our donor of the.